G'day, my name is Alex and today I'm going to show you how to unbox an uh, Intel NUC mini PC, install the RAM and also the hard drive. So for this today we need the mini PC kit, we need a, a sodium RAM DDR4 and we also need a hard drive. In this case I've got a Samsung Evo solid state hard drive. We will also need a Phillips head screwdriver. So let's get started. Your mini PC, an Intel NUC mini PC kit will come in a box like this. And once you open it, you'll get the case. You'll get some paperwork. You'll get a wall mounting bracket so you can actually install it on a wall. You'll get a power adapter with various attachments and some screws. So depending on the country you're in, we need to put the right plug. For example, I'm in Australia, so we use this plug. With this power adapter, there is a latch here. You just push down and slide out, take away, and you slide in the right uh, plug. Okay, with the other plugs as well as that uh, that face, we can we can just put, pack them away, and we'll put this we'll put this aside. This is the Intel Mini PC nut case. It's actually held together right now by four screws. And to actually open it up, we will put this on this anti-static mat. We'll unscrew these screw, uh, screws in an anti-clockwise direction until it actually moves up, up and down. You won't be able to take the screw completely out. But as long as it's moving, uh, be a, uh, able to move up and down freely, it's, it means it's unscrewed. Okay. Once that's actually removed, your your case will come out a, a part like that. You'll see that the bottom of the case, this side, is actually attached to the, the main part of the case with two cables, a SATA cable and a jumper switches cable, which actually powers the LED lights at the front. Okay, so I'm gonna unplug these, okay? It's a little bit tricky, but basically you can just pull the cables apart just be gentle in the sense that don't force anything to come open if it's not coming away fairly easily. Okay, that's the general rule. On this case, this is where the RAM is installed. This on the cover, on the bottom, this is where this hard drive is installed. Okay, we'll do the RAM first. So with the sodium RAM, you just have to pierce the sticker on each side and then open thusly. When you're handling these any components, do not grab or do not touch the middle where the RAM chips are or the where the contacts are. Handle it by the edges. Okay, that way you do not leave your anything that's on your hand like oil or de uh, moisture on onto the chip. So like I said, this sodium RAM will be installed onto this. Okay, so we like I said handle it by the by the edges. We line up that notch. If you can see there's a notch in the golden contacts here with the notch that's actually on where we're installing it, there. So we line it up, we push it in, still handling by the edges, and we push it in, and we push down until you hear the click. Okay, that click is very important because that click means it's actually locked in, and that it's actually installed correctly. If you uh, wanna take it out, it's a matter of going to the edges, pulling these things aside, you can see the ramp pops up and you can remove it again. So again, we make sure we line up the notches, we push it in, and we make sure it's right in, and we push down until we hit a click. And that's pretty easy. 
Okay, the next thing is the solid state hard drive. You don't need to have a solid state hard drive, but it's definitely preferable for the performance improvements. So again, we'll, there's a couple of stickers that we'll quickly pierce with our screwdriver and it slides out like this. Okay, so the box, a, a uh, here's the solid state hard drive, but at the back there's a CD-ROM with the instruction manuals that we can also download from their website. So the solid state hard drive, as you can see, is uh, has uh, the SATA connections on the back. Okay, these SATA connections must line up with the corresponding SATA connections at the back of this uh, this case. Okay, so make sure you are actually lining up correctly. So in this case, it's in this orientation, and uh, we just slide it in and push it in until it clicks. Okay, basically when it clicks, it means that the, those con uh, contacts are actually connecting to the back of the SATA connections here. At this point, you're, you're uh, pretty much done. Okay, and this, uh, this next bit is where we actually plug those cables we unplugged earlier back into the uh, mini PC motherboard and also the SATA cable back into the PC, uh, mini PC motherboard and then we'll just screw the screws together and we will, it will be it. So, with this little white connection, it goes to this uh, beige connection there. If you look at the, the orientation of the little plugs, they actually need to fit onto those pins in there. So you make sure you are facing them in the right direction and they should just go in. Again, you should never need to force force this connection. So if you're forcing it, that means there's something wrong. If you look at the SATA connection, you'll see there's a, like an L shape. You'll find that that L shape is also in where the connection goes, So which means, right there, which means that this connection can only go in one way. Make sure you only, you face it in the right direction. And then we just, again, with a firm push, it will go in. Again, not forcing it. Okay, now that these uh, the case and the uh, and the cover are connected, and the hard drive and the RAM are installed, we can actually in, uh, plug it in. You'll notice that there's an arrow here pointing to the front, which means that is the orientation. So the front looks like that. So this arrow must point to that direction. If you look at the back, the back has the VGA, the HDMI, the Ethernet, and some other uh, plugs. Okay, so we'll make sure that orientation is correct. We'll push it down, not, not forcing you again. And in a clockwise direction now, screw the screws back in. Okay. Okay, so if you want to test all systems that go, you can just plug the power cable into where it says uh, the 19 volts here. But I would recommend that you actually plug this into a PowerPoint first before we do that. So we've got a TV here. So we might just plug the PowerPoint in plug the PowerPoint into the case. We've got a HDMI connection here and we'll plug it into the HDMI port. And we place it, obviously this is only for testing, I'm placing it on the chair but you should place it in your entertainment system. And this is the power button and if you if you turn on the power and press the power button it should become blue okay and if we look at the screen of the TV 
And if it's actually turned on to the HDMI, you should see, eventually you see the Intel NUC boot up screen. Right now there's no operating systems on the hard drive or there's no bootable source. Right now it will not be able to boot any operating system. So that's why we are getting this error, which is not really error. It's just saying you do not have a source of boot. So therefore that is actually showing us that, that we've installed the RAM as well as the hard drive correctly. And at this stage, we can plug in a USB keyboard and mouse if we wanted to and enter the BIOS to confirm this. Okay, we'll end our video here and our next instructions will be installing the operating system to this Intel NUC and that will be done later. Okay, thank you.